Hey, do you know what this animal is? Well, you most likely do, of course. It's a chameleon. Chameleons are often used in popular media. Like, very, very often. How about I ask you a question? What do you think is commonly associated to chameleons on popular medias? Like, if I say chameleon, what traits came up to your mind? I'll give you 10 seconds. Go. Alright, for those who actually think, thanks. For those who don't, it's fine. Let's move on. So, popular medias commonly associated chameleon with camouflage. Specifically, camouflaging by the means of color changing. While, yes, zoologists nowadays don't really attribute the color changing of chameleons as a mean to camouflage themselves. That's not what I want to talk about in this video. What if I told you? Not all chameleon does this. In fact, there are a group of chameleons that do not, called the leaf chameleon. So, let me raise the question. What exactly is leaf chameleon? So, let's talk about the general characteristic of chameleon. First, yes, a lot of chameleons do exhibit color changing. There are several reasons for this. Namely, for thermal regulation and social signal. It might also be beneficial for camouflage, in some specific case. The second, they have a projectile tongue. They move slowly and are an ambush predator. Having this projectile tongue helps them catch prey. I'm also not gonna talk too much about this, since I plan to make a video about animals with projectile tongue. Well, someday, not soon though. The third is their eye. They have these eyes with circular eyelid that can move around, almost covering 360 degrees. Almost being the focus point, meaning that they do still have blind spots. Oh and, these eyes can move individually. Those help them scan the area or focus better on prey. The fourth, which might not be that obvious, is their food. They have this food that almost looks like a zygodactyl food like those in owls and parrots. This type of adaptation is common and helpful for arboreal animals that needs to grasp and move on trees. But do note that chameleon food is not true zygodactyly, meaning they don't have the same structure as owls and parrots food. Anyway, lastly, the fifth is their spirally tail. This tail looks spiral most of the time because they are prehensile. That means they can use their tail to grasp. In this case, the grass branches. Again, adaptation for arboreal life. Alright, so, let's move on to our topic, the leaf chameleon. So, what is leaf chameleon? Taxonomically, they are their own subfamily of chameleon, the Brucaceae. Oh, by the way, there are only two subfamilies of the chameleons. The other one is chameleonine, which are, well, the other chameleon, the common one, and it's quite a big gap of diversity between the two. In 2015 publication on the taxonomic checklist of chameleon, out of the 202 species of the chameleonidae family, only 32 of those are in the Brucaceae subfamily, which is almost 1 to 6 ratio. Do pay attention that it is a 2015 data though, now the number might be higher, or perhaps lower. There are only two genera in the Brucaceae subfamily, that is, the genus Brucaceae and Paleon. Leaf chameleon can be found mostly on Madagascar. In fact, I thought it is endemic to Madagascar and perhaps some small islands around it. But when I tried to fact check this, Wikipedia article said it can also be found in Central Africa. I'm not sure what the source for this statement is, so I can't exactly fact check that. But I guess, the Wikipedia article says this because, in the previous sentence, it said Rampoleon is classified in Brucassinae, which they don't currently. They were moved to the Chameleonidae, so yeah. I'm not sure about this, but my point is that they live in Madagascar. So, what's so different about them? 
Well, the first is that they are not arboreal, they live on the ground, which is littered with dead leaves. Which is why they kinda resemble dead leaves. Good for camouflage. The second is that they don't really do color change. They do change mildly, like from a brighter color to a darker, gloomy color, just like most lizards when stressed, unlike the generic chameleon that can change color drastically. In fact, it was noted that one of their species, Brucasia nana, apparently cannot change color at all. The next is their tail. Their tail is not prehensile, so they don't curl up. Why though? Well, as I said, they are not arboreal, so they don't really need to grasp branches and stuff. Article even stated that they can use their stumpy tail like a fifth leg to move around and climb small trees. And yeah, those are what makes them different. The other characters, like the tongue, eye, and foot, are the same as other chameleons. So, if you have been on the internet for quite a while like me, you might stumble upon this image on several articles or videos. This image is quite popular on the internet 12 years ago. This is Brucasia micra, which is one of the smallest known living vertebrates. Well, at that time at least, like 12 years ago. But hey, in 2021, another Brucasia was found, which is Brucasia nana, which guess what? It is the smallest reptile that is currently known at least. Quite a funny name also, you know, Nana and Micra, Nano and Micro. <clears throat> Alright, anyway, if you are wondering about their egg, for whatever reason, then here is the CT scan of a graphic female, with a developing egg inside it. If you want to know how the real egg looks like, well, while we don't really have the image for that, here, let me give you an example in another species. This is an adult female of Brucasia desperata, and its egg. Look at how big that egg is in comparison. Oh and, here is the hemipenis of the male specimen of Brucasia nana. If you want to see, for whatever reason, everything is in the research article. Check out the link in the description if you want to read it. Some members of the Brucasia genus have a spiky vertebral of protrusion called Rickensage, which, if you speak Deutsch, you will notice that it's basically just the word for back saw. And it is actually called that because it resembles a saw and it's located on their backbones. So like spinal saw. This protrusion is especially prominent in Brucasia pararmata. You can see from this image that it has several spiky armor plates, which is of course quite unique among the chameleons. This is, in fact, not just thickened skin. Underneath the integument, there are several bony structures shaping the spikes. This bony structure is quite similar to the reptile osteoderm, but differs in their composition and location. While they are a small group of animals, quite literally in many ways, they are actually very unique, record-breaking even. I mentioned that they are endemic to the Madagascar, and actually, a lot of them are considered to be endangered. Some even critically endangered due to the decline of their habitat. They move so slow and they are so small, which is why they can't really move away from their habitat. I just want to raise the awareness of these creatures. For now, I'm just glad that you learned more by watching this video. And it's all for now. Oh and can I just say, damn, Brucasia Micra was 12 years ago? Damn, I'm really getting old then.